So I'm here in the garden with Nigel and a lovely Brian who's who's hiding over there. <laughs> and you might wonder what on earth we're doing, but we are putting an above ground pool in. So I bought it. Um, and I think it was in a sale last year. It's tucked away in the garage. And so I've just come out here and, and thought I would share with you what we are up to. Uh, at the moment, we've put these timbers around to level the ground. And then we're going to dig this section right out. So we've got a machine coming next yeah, week, haven't we? Machine coming on Tuesday, and we're going to dig this section right out, and then we'll fill it up with 100 mil of grade A fill and whack it down solid, and then we're going to put sand all over the top and whack that down solid, scrape it off, and then we'll stand your pool up on top of that. Very, very exciting, and we're putting some decking around the summer house. I haven't been particularly happy with the summer house because they didn't put it square on the concrete base, which has always annoyed me. So we're going to put some decking around to neaten it up. And then in here, I haven't been in here, I have absolutely no idea what it looks like, but I can see that the boys have been um, having Nerf war. So this is the summer house. We've obviously got table tennis, but I'm going to be making some curtains to make this a little bit nicer and to make it a bit of a kind of pool house um, to work with obviously the pool that's that's the other side. So um, yeah, this is a little project that I'm working on and I've got some pots to put some, I think I'm going to get some box balls to put in some pots. I'll show you the pots in a minute. Um, just to make this area look a little bit prettier than it currently does. And it's, yeah, the children are so excited. <laughs> They've literally been saying, Daddy, Daddy, when's it going up? And finally, we've got some gorgeous weather. So um, Brian and Nigel are here doing it now. I think this is the first time <laughs> I've ever caught my husband with the vacuum cleaner. I am very, very impressed. Even doing a proper job. I think I'm going to come outside because you probably can't hear me. I think he's been taking tips from Ask Charlie, don't you? So these are the planters. I've got two of them um, from Sarah Raven. I actually got them in the sale. Oh, I love a sale. And I'm just working out what I'm going to put in them. I'm thinking maybe small box balls, but I haven't quite decided. Boys with their toys. We've got the digger. And then this has arrived too. So, um, Hopefully, the chat's make really good progress today. It's very exciting. I'm hoping that you'll be able to hear me okay, but look, this is going to be much quicker using this um, digger and whatever that other bit of machinery is called, dumper. So huge progress has been made pretty rapidly. Look at this, it's all level. We've got the hardcore. And this just needs to be squashed down. And um, the children are very, very, very excited. Look at this, huge progress is being made. Florence is just getting involved, but look, 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 look. This is very, very exciting. We will have a pool soon. It's sort of up, it's your it's so hideous. I can see it from the kitchen and it's a real eyesore. I'm not kind of loving this, but anyway, it keeps the children happy. I'm just thinking of what we can what we can push around it to, dis to disguise it. I'm not sure there is any disguising of this monstrosity that has arrived in our garden. Anyway, there are a lot of people that are happy about it. I'm not so happy about it because I can't see my beautiful flower bed in that corner. Anyhow, I've realised as a parent that we have to let a lot of things go. And I think this is probably one of those. So the pool is now complete and we've got this decking around it. Nigel has done such an excellent job. He's also increased the decking in the front of the summer house because it was really uneven and they just did a bad job and it was something that was really bugging me. And I think because it was bugging me, it's meant that I haven't wanted to give this area a glow up until now. So these two dolly tubs I bought from Sarah Raven and we have put some holes in the bottom for drainage and then when we were down in Devon I spotted these two dolly tubs 
and I thought they would be brilliant with bay in here. So again, we have got holes in the bottom of those and some old terracotta pots that were sort of frost damaged. I have just, well, this bit I need to take a sledgehammer to, but I've broken up those bits, which I'm gonna put in the bottom of these dolly tubs to start with, which helps with drainage. So I'm gonna get going with that first. And it's really important that you have drainage at the bottom of your pots, so. out because I need a bit more. So now Dave at the garden centre was terribly helpful when I bought these and I've got some jolly heavy horticultural potting grit which I'm going to mix into my compost and add that in first. So let's get going with that. So I'm going to mix it in this big tub. I have got heat free compost which I'm mixing into the grid and this is again for drainage really important to try and get peat free compost um, so much better um, for the environment and then I'm going to tip this in here and just keep doing the same thing that has now um, got the grit and the compost in and I've just placed the bay just to check that the levels are right. I just want it fractionally below the lip of the dolly tub. So I'm going to take this out of the pot and then put the rest of the compost around it with somebody going for a hack past at the moment. It's a lovely sound. So I wiggled it out of its pot. I'm just going to place it there, making sure it's in the centre, and then just pull this. I might need some more compost. Just to spread that around. I am going to need to go and get another bag. Um, and then we'll just pour in this last bit. That is one down. Next one to crack on and do. I've just sat out to rest for a moment, it's quite hard work. Now these box balls are looking a little bit tatty and worse for wear. Um, Simon actually picked them up for next to nothing. They were going to be got rid of and so he got three for a tenner. They may or may not last, but I'm going to plant them in these little do dolly tubs, feed them with um, you know, some, some good nutrients into the soil as I water them and hopefully, fingers crossed, we can bring them back to um, looking slightly healthier than this. So I have put, um, in fact, oh, it's quite heavy. That's what's in the bottom of there. I um, couldn't find any more pots to break up. So I went for a rummage actually behind the summer house and I found all sorts of bits, which I put in there. So I'm just gonna do exactly the same thing with the grit and the compost and then plant these up. One of the finishing touches for the summer house is to make some curtains. It doesn't really need curtains, but I thought curtains would be a nice little touch to it. So I have got my fabric here. I will give you a close up of it. It is just a sort of dark green stripe, a ticking. I love a ticking, I love a stripe, I love green, and this fabric was really inexpensive. I think I bought it last summer in a sale at Falcon Fabrics in Chichester. I love that place. And I just thought it would work really well for the summer house. <laughs> the dogs are running around. In fact, you haven't seen Lola for ages. Lola! Lola! She's got a toy in her mouth. Big. She's getting pretty big and so is Florence. 
Um, Layla is actually almost the same size as Bonnie, our old Labrador. Um, and yes, I think she might be humongous. But look at this little one. She's been to the groomers and she's looking terribly smart. So is Penny, but I think Penny's outside sunbathing. Penny is a complete and utter sun worshipper. Um, but you like to run around with Lola, don't you, causing havoc. Anyway, back to the curtains. So I've got this fabric and I am just going to measure out how much I need. So there are three windows that I am doing and I've measured them. And you always want, you don't want to measure the panes, you want to go slightly wider. So it's 33 inches wide and 51 deep. So I will allow extra as well. It's always important because I'm, these are just really simple basic curtains, but I will add on an extra for five inches on top. So I need to make the 51 measurement um, to 55 and then for the width, I don't need to add on too much more there. I'm gonna add that up to 35 inches wide. So I'm gonna lay the fabric out nicely. I've got my tape measure. I've got a pencil. You can either use a pencil or some tailor's chalk, something like that to mark it. Make sure it's straight before you cut. So let's get this fabric. This fabric also is double width which is really handy. So I think I'm gonna have loads of extra fabric and I might make some big cushions to go on the floor. I'm not gonna do that now. At, at some point, I will do that. Anyway, enough waffle. I've measured out and I have got my fabric scissors. Really important to have um, scissors that are just for fabric. They need to be really sharp and so I keep these hidden away in my sewing box. So I've measured out my line that I need to cut. So this is going to do two of the windows. So I should just measure out the second piece. Really good to have a big kitchen table to do this on. Makes life so much easier. I'm just going to knit again. That is one window and I could make a pair of curtains. These are so basic and really, really simple. So I'm just doing it roughly. If I was properly making curtains you know, for our home, I would be taking a lot more care and attention. But this, I just wanted to show you how it is easy to do it. And actually you could do these by hand. You don't need to have a sewing machine. So I'm just going to fold this in half now and then I'm going to cut this in half again, just up the fold that I just made. That is one window ready to stitch up. I'm just going to do the same and prepare these um, pieces as well. So I am hiding away in my sewing corner and I've got my fabric. I just want to turn over the edges and I am going to actually turn them twice so I have a really nice edge. It's called a French seam. So you can see I'm just going to fold that in just a tiny, tiny bit and then I'm going to fold it again and I'm going to run the sewing machine down that first. If you wanted a really neat finish you could iron it so it's flat before you start stitching. I've got my sewing machine ready, threaded up here. So get into position and actually I have just tested the tension on my machine on a scrap of fabric which is really important before you actually start stitching on the good fabric that you just test out and make sure that you are happy with the tension. So I'm just going to fold this and this fabric's quite stiff so actually it works quite well for, um, for this. I don't really need to iron it. I can just fold and press. I'm going to start from this end and I want the neat stitching along the top. 
we're just going to run the sewing machine up here. Now you can just do this by hand if you don't have the machine. A little bit more time consuming, but it will work. Position it carefully. I'm using the stripe in the fabric to be my guide, so I make sure that it's not a wiggly line. It's quite helpful actually using a stripe fabric, so you can get it straighter than um, if you're just using a plain fabric. You can use this as a guide to make sure that the foot of your sewing machine is in the right position. I've done both side seams and I'm now just pinning the top fold. So I'm folding it like I did the side seams, but then I'm doing a bigger fold so I can get this through because this is what I'm hanging my curtains on. So this I will poke all the way through um, once I've stitched it. But I just want to make sure that I get it as straight as I can. So I am using some pins here. So I've pinned along there and now I'm just going to stitch it. One actually top tip, when you are using pins, you want to put them in the direction that you are stitching in so you can easily pull them out if you poke them in the other way around. So that's something just to give a little bit of thought to when you're using a sewing machine and pins. Make sure that they're poking the right way. It's um, a real bore to have to turn them all the way up, other way around. Have it so I can poke that wire through so I haven't stitched up the ends there. And now the final thing to do is just to hem that and I'm just going to do it in exactly the same way as I did my side hems. One done, <laughs> five more to go, <laughs> I better get cracking. Well Yesterday I finished making all the curtains but I went to watch Archie play cricket at school. Um, I'm quite conscious that um, these, this is his last term at prep school, um, are quite special and sacred and there was a, a county a county match or something, I, can, I don't know the technicalities, but he was playing cricket and I thought, you know what, rather than finishing this I am going to go and watch him do that. So these are all stitched and ready to go up. And I realised I didn't introduce this video very well. And I'm not sure. I, the weather is pretty horrid today. And actually we've got a couple of panes of glass that need replacing. But there is the pool. And it is something that we have talked about for years, having a swimming pool here. We've talked about moving the hedges at the end. We've talked about putting it um behind the hedges we've talked about having it in the garden we've talked about all sorts of things we've looked into having a swimming pool you know dug in, in you know like a proper proper pool we've looked at having like a massive hole dug and then I think they come from Germany I don't know because Sai has done all the research on this you can get like a plastic pre-formed and it literally just goes into a hole and we've been to look at them. We've done loads of kind of research and investigation into it, but actually to put a pool in the ground, however you do it, costs a huge amount. And this hasn't cost us very much at all. So I bought it in the sale at the end of the season last year. And that's actually quite a savvy thing to do when people are kind of clearing out summer things and, and things are going into sale. If you've got storage, to to store it for the winter then then it's a great way um to save quite a bit of money so he bought that in the sale in um at the end of the summer early autumn i can't remember exactly and it's been stored in the garage waiting for um spring to come and get it get it done the children have been super super excited about it they're a bit disappointed that he didn't put it in i'm sure actually it came in at the beginning of september that we didn't do it then actually there was really really no point and it's much better to do things when the weather is better and if the ground is really wet as well it gets really muddy it gets trashed and so this has really been very very easy <clears throat> Nigel did a great job of preparing the ground around it and actually the company that we bought the pool from have said it's their the most, you know, looks the best out of all their sort of above ground swimming pools. They've done such an excellent job. 
we bought our summer house the previous summer house literally collapsed i can't remember how many years ago it was i'm thinking about four years ago i'm pretty sure it's sort of pre ask charlie and we put a concrete plinth down the, the dimensions of the summer house they came to install it and there were some timbers that were warped and the fitters that, that came to fit it said you know this isn't right there's too many warped timbers um we are taking it away and they'll have to you know construct a new one whatever and come back and, re and, and put it up for you and they were so lovely and so fab but the guys that came back to do that summer house were really quite rude and had an attitude. And they put the summer house at an angle on the concrete base. And I've always been really cross about it. They did a bad, bad, bad job. And so there was this bit of concrete sticking out and there was nothing that you could do about it. I mean, I don't know why you build something on the skew. And it's the same at the back. Of course, the back doesn't matter, but the front does matter. And so it's something that always bothered me. And I didn't want to make the summer house look beautiful because every time I went there, and this might sound really pathetic, but it just it made me really quite frustrated. They did loads of things wrong. We complained and we got absolutely nowhere. And I'm not going to tell you what the company is, but I am definitely not recommending it either. So anyway, when they did... The pool base, they have put decking around the pool. They've also hidden that concrete bit in front of the summer house. So it now looks so much nicer. Obviously the wood will mellow and it will you know, match in with the other wood. So at the moment we've just got these two tones going on, but actually I don't mind at all. But I just thought it was time to give the summer house a glow up, make it look gorgeous, finally make the curtains for it and so it can be a little bit of a pool house games room and we can all enjoy it we've got our barbecue area just beside it and so the plan is to spend a lot of time out there this summer I was hoping today was going to be glorious and I was going to get the sun lounges out and sort of create a beautiful setting for you but at the moment it's quite windy it's drizzling and it's not very nice out there, but we need to go and put up the curtains. So I'm going to take you outside. Well, I, I have made curtains like this, but so many years ago, I can't, uh, I'm not an expert. So this isn't really a how-to. This is Charlie's winging it. But, you know, we all wing things in life, don't we, from time to time. So I've got, I've got my fittings. I have got my cable which has now gone in a bit of a knot. I need to get some wire cutters and I'm not sure what other equipment I may or may not need. But let's um, let's get out there and see if we see if these work. Fingers crossed they do. Hopefully my measurements are correct. So here I am at window number one. Um, that is where we have the barbecue area. So it's just gonna be a really, really fun area up here, I hope. I'm screwing one of these in um, to this side. And actually, it's going in quite easily, which is excellent. I love it when you can do a job completely on your own. You don't need to ask anyone for help. And making these curtains Honestly, it's super, super, super easy. You could even use, um, I don't know what the technical term is. I want to call it Bonderweb. Bonderweb is that stuff that you can iron on for seams. You could even, if you didn't have a sewing machine, you could Bonderweb um, these curtains and literally just um, glue the sides. So both those are in. So this doesn't have any stretch to it and I am just going to double check my measurements between the two eyes. It's uh, just over 32 inches. It's 82 and a bit centimetres. I'm, I'm quite funny. You might wonder why I'm working 
in inches and centimetres. If it's closer, if the measurement's closer to the inch, then I'll go with inches. If it's closer to like, if it was 82 centimetres exactly, then I'd use that or if it's 80 centimetres. It's just how this funny dyslexic brain of mine works, which can be terribly confusing. It can even be confusing for myself. Anyway, I'm gonna measure my 82 and a half. I've also got to leave a bit of room for the uh, hook that's on that end. So actually it probably wants to be slightly shorter, but we can always cut more off. We cannot add it on. I'm just going to hold it up, hook that on. I don't want them to be too saggy baggy and I think that's going to be spot on. Now while I'm doing the cutting and snipping I may as well actually just do my all my legs. So do exactly the same. Luckily all the windows are exactly the same size so that makes life so much easier. I don't need to have curtains in here, but it's just those little finishing touches which I think make something look really beautiful and like you've made that little extra bit of effort. They're not going to be closed. Well, they might be closed if somebody's changing in here, but they'll just make it look complete. Right, snipping these on my Sharpie mark. And then I am going to poke it through its moment of truth to see whether it's worked. But it should. There's no reason why it shouldn't have worked. Um, thread that through. I'm putting both pairs of curtains on. So I need to gather that up so the space. The raw salvage edge I just actually um, turned over. I didn't finish it really neatly. That's going to be the outside. So I actually um, this one and thread that through there. You might be able to hear a little bit of a humming noise in the background and we've actually gone extravagant and got a pool heater which actually I'm not sure in England it is an extravagance um, but that is what's making the noise and so the children can get loads and loads of use out of it. I haven't been in yet. I'm not, I'm not a massive fan of, oh, I don't know, I love swimming in the sea. I don't know, it's a bit too cold at the moment, particularly today, but the children have been in and Simon has been in too and he, um, he is very pleased with it. In fact, he's very, I think we could go as far as say overexcited. Bless him. <laughs> he's a bit of a child sometimes. So right, I've got both pairs of curtains on there and then I'm just going to screw in this hook on to that end. I want to be really careful not to let go because I think that they could, um, the curtains could come off. So this is a moment of truth. Up they go. It is a little bit saggy baggy with the weight, so actually I am going to make a minor adjustment. And things always need tweaking. I'm just going to take this off. 
and snip it a little bit. I'm probably going to snip a centimetre, but again, I'd much rather have um, it too long and be able to snip it down than to have gone too short and wasted. I don't mind wasting. Simon doesn't know I'm making curtains. He's up in Grimsby at the moment. So it would be a nice surprise for him when he comes back. Right, let's try again. Much better. And then I'm just going to actually sort of tie them back and just have them as little little pretties, but then if somebody wants to pull them across, they can. Obviously, I haven't lined them. If I was doing this for a home, I would have made them a lot fuller and fancier, but actually I didn't want to do anything really over the top. People think, oh my goodness, she's gone a little bit crazy, but just really simple um, tie backs. I'm actually going to use, it's in the greenhouse, I need to go and get it. Um, some garden twine as my tie backs because I think that would just fit in really well with the rustic look. I was going to make some tie backs out of this fabric and then I thought, you know what? It's a summer house. Garden twine, I think, will look perfect. I've been up in the greenhouse and I've got some garden twine, so I'm just going to cut six lengths of this that I can then tie in a bow. just make really simple little tie backs. So here we are into our summer house. There are a few little bits that I will do over the coming months. I bought this at the Country Bacant Fair. I actually bought it, gosh, over a year ago and I just thought it would be really useful. So that is for hanging towels. We've got our curtains. I think they look really sweet. And I bought these big cushions from uh, King's Framers in Lewis. I absolutely love that shop. And I thought, again, these are just really useful for having outside when the weather is beautiful. Not so beautiful right now. A basket of throws and things for the garden. And then these posters. So we've got this one here, then this, which is the Beatles, this one, and then Girls Problems over here. These are posters that Sai has had for years. They were just in storage. I thought it was such a shame that they weren't up, so we've just put these up in here. We've obviously got our table tennis, <laughs> a pram. I had a silver cross pram for the children. In fact, I've still got it, it's up in the attic. And this is a, ch a child's version. And it's just actually, we're using it now for um, table tennis bats and balls and things like that. We've got this big old trunk, which has got all sorts of things for the children. It just keeps them tidy. And then the dreaded Nerf guns, the bullets of these things drive me utterly crazy. But, it, you know, great to have them out here now and in a plastic tub. So they all contained to one space. But I am really, really pleased with my very, very simple curtains. Yes, a pool toy. Simple curtains, but I just think they add a little bit of coziness in here. I mean, then just something that I knocked up very, very cheaply, very quickly, but just a little bit of a finishing touch and then we'll take you out and show you so obviously this is the decking that they've done such an amazing job and it just finishes it off and also when wet children are coming out of the pool the grass isn't going to get muddy we'll step there and then the pool gubbins over here and the temperature actually of the pool is pretty good in fact, I could actually go in there. It's not too bad. So I'm really pleased with how 
this has turned out. We have got football net going on, football goal, whatever you call it, here. Hopefully that will be relocated relatively soon. She's in. <laughs> she's in, she's in, she's in. Coco is christening the pool. Is it freezing? Yeah, I bet, that was, I bet that was quite a shock. So Coco is actually going in to clean out the leaves. Coco, are there leaves and the and down that have yes, sunk? Mm -hmm. So Coco is um, sweetly on leaf patrol for it's us. It's freezing. It's freezing. Go on, Daddy. Why didn't you get in, Papa? <laughs> Not about the ladder. No, we need we need to um, we need to sort the ladder out. But this literally is the first time anybody has been in. So that is our summer house to glow up and our swimming pool. I'm really thrilled, and I know that over the coming summer months, more things will be added. And I'm hoping that we spend hours out here having lots and lots of fun, lots of barbecues friends, laughter, noise, and that's what it's all about, really. <laughs> the children are so, so excited that we've got this pool, finally. It's something that we've been talking about for so many years, and actually having an above ground one works really well for us, and it's, you know, saved us a fortune. I did think it was a complete and utter eyesore. Simon got back one day and he said, what do you think of the pool? And I said, it's incredibly ugly, it's hideous. And he was really disappointed. I mean, it is quite ugly, but I think we've done our best to make it look as good as it possibly can. And I think there'll be more pots out there, more greenery, and it's all about the children having fun. And the great thing about the location of the pool is I can see them from the kitchen. I can be cooking and keeping, obviously not a close eye, but they're old enough now that I don't need to be keeping a really close eye but I can have the doors open, I can hear them, and I can be completely aware of what's going on without me having to go to a different part of the garden and sit there and supervise. That's something that I really, really wasn't keen on. I just um, always worry about pools and things like that. <laughs> there might be an accident and I would, would not be in earshot. Whereas here I am and I can totally see what's going on so I can be cooking. I can be ironing, I can be doing things inside and, and know what's happening. So that for me is really important. Anyway, I hope that you have enjoyed the journey. Obviously, I've been filming this over a period of time. It hasn't just happened like that. Please do um, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear your feedback. Do give making really simple curtains a go. You don't need to be a seamstress. You don't need to do a curtain course. Honestly, they are so basic and so easy. So do if you've got an area of your home that you just want to give a little bit of a glow up, whether it's, you know, hiding a washing machine or a dishwasher or something, really simple curtains can make a big, big difference to an area. Anyway, I hope you have a super, super weekend and I am sending you lots of love. Remember, if you haven't hit subscribe, please do that. And please share my, um, my YouTube channel with other people that you think may enjoy it. I would be really grateful of that. Anyway, I will see you again next week. Sending lots of love and thank you.